Hello and welcome back to Study Abroad and School Experience. This is likely episode 4 or 5 because I'm behind um, because of few schedule changes related with school, my schooling. Um, so yeah, I have to push out more videos. Um, but anyway, this is about episode 4 or 5 within a series. Um, the last time I uploaded a video was on Monday, and, um, yeah, anyway, in today's video, I'm going to be covering Mississippi Valley State University. My maternal grandmother actually attended, um, this institution. This school is located in Mississippi, obviously, and it's in the Delta. Everything that is going to be presented in this PowerPoint is directly from the university's website. The source is cited on each slide. Usually the left bottom corner of the slide. The images that you all see on this slide are directly from um, the university's website. So just putting that out there, my general disclaimer. So as always, come and learn with me as I learn, basically. Okay, Mississippi Valley State University. In 1946, legislation was enacted to create Mississippi Vocational College. The institution was created to train teachers and educators for elementary um, and rural schools. The school also provided vocational training. And then there's the location in Mississippi. It's in the Delta. Um, in 1950, so on February 19, 1950, 1950, excuse me, a ceremony was held. So this is when the school opened essentially in 1950. The institution opened in the summer and there were 205 in service, end quote, teachers. And the school, the academic school year started um, from 1950 to 1951 because you know in the US, school um, usually starts the fall semester of that year. So late August through September, and then goes on through December, which is the winter time, and in January, the spring semester starts. Anyway, in 1964, the name of the school was changed to Mississippi Valley State College. Um, the college received authorization to offer liberal arts education and science degree programs. And then in 1974, the name of the college was changed to Mississippi Valley State University, MVSU for short. That's the acronym. That's just a brief history regarding this institution. You can do your own uh, research if you're considering applying because um, they have an entire section dedicated to the history and then of course you can look at academic uh, databases or google hello so i choose mississippi valley state university um it's accredited by the southern association of colleges and schools Commission on Colleges, that's the acronym for, for that, is the youngest institution in HBCU and the Mississippi Public University System. It has uh, more than 36 academic majors. According to their website, it states that there is no out-of-state tuition. Um, most of the students who attend this institution are from Mississippi. They have small course sizes, so there's a 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which means it's a small group of students and then one faculty member. It states that they have a FedEx logistics center on campus that may be important to somebody. Um, it's an NCAA Division I university that has 15 athletic teams. So for those of you who are um, sports enthusiasts or you play sports, this may be an institution for you. The school has one of seven accredited graduate environmental health programs in the U.S. Big money, essentially, is what they're saying. Academic life. So I was looking for the various um, academic majors minors, etc. 
I'm not going to go through the entire list because I want to reduce how uh, lengthy these PowerPoints are. But I always try to be as thorough as possible so you can always pause the read. And then, of course, as always, if you're considering applying, you can go to the website. Everything that you need to know will be listed in the description box below. Um, but you still should watch the video to its entirety. So I'll go through a few biology, account, um, chemistry, communication, computer science, cybersecurity, and these are undergraduate. Um, criminal justice, early childhood education, engineering technology, um, environmental health and general art, instrumental, instrumental music education, journalism, public relations, social science, general studies, painting, social science history, speech, visual communication, and as an MBA, Master of Business Administration, a Master of Science in Criminal Justice, um, a Master of Social Work, Master of Science in Elementary Education, Master of Public Health, Master um, of Human Services, and then Master in Sports and Fitness Management, and then the image that you all see, at the bottom left, I took it from the school's website, and that's just my depiction in theirs of academic life of what it's like to be a student at a Mississippi Valley State University. These two, they seem to be enjoying their time, and the young lady, she kind of favored her. It's the hair color and the glasses and the little head tip with the smile. Um, so yeah, cues. Your favorite, her song, if you have a favorite or just a song you like, I'm not going to sing you here because YouTube will copyright strike certain things. Anyway, considering applying favorite section. So, um, in terms of applying for this institution, they had this separated by domestic first year. Um, international first year, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and because of the way that they had it set up on their website, that's how I presented it here. Um, and then, of course, I listed the academic requirements that they had. If I didn't list everything, it's because I didn't want to crowd the PowerPoint slide as much as I usually do or have or will do at some point. I try to uh, because it's hard on the eyes. Anyway, so you have to complete college prep curriculum, which is called CPC. That's the acronym. You need a 3.20 minimum, um, 16 minimum on the ACT, 880 minimum on the SAT. I won't go through everything, just some things. And then in terms of class rank, it says top 50% with a minimum of 16 or an 880 on ACT. So this is certain things. And then it continues in terms of athletics, um, etc. Um, domestic transfer students. So if you reside within the U.S. Um, and you're transferring from one institution to this institution, these are the requirements outlined for you. So at least 30 semester hours with a 2.0 GPA minimum and then um, the number of hours in re respect the um, respective subjects that they um, expect you to have a certain amount of credits in each section because you know that colleges there's your your core courses for your major and then there's a bunch of general education requirements so this stuff is likely the gen ed requirements that they expect you to have um and then this is um additional stuff so if you earned an associate degree of arts um, a 2.0 minimum, and then the ACT, SAT scores, high school transcript, etc. And please note that on their website, they state that you may be admitted without um, an ACT or SAT score. So you would have to just double check with the admissions department because they have it in red. Um, in certain places in terms of admissions and under these sections 
for each student, um, prospective student, um, who's considering applying. Readmitted students. So, if you remember from pre uh, previous PowerPoints, readmitted student is basically someone who attended this institution previously, um, and for one reason or another, they had to withdraw. Um, but then they came back. So, um, it says any student who has not attended this school um, for one regular semester with the exception of um, some, exception, some sessions, excuse me, you have to reapply. And then this is, that's the only requirement that I saw for the students seeking readmission. And then non-degree seekers, of course, this usually means someone um, who is taking, who just needs to retake a course, maybe, or they would like to take a course at this institution. Um, and then use it to apply to that degree at the institution. So this is what they state, and you are not eligible um, to receive financial aid from this institution if you are a non-degree seeker. Okay, so this is an additional list. If you didn't, add, if you didn't meet the admission requirements, or if you currently don't meet the admission requirements and you really like this school and you've heard lots of good things about it and you really want to attend, yada, 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 yada. This is the slide for you. So they provide um, an Emerging Scholars Program is a summer developmental program, which basically all participants who participate in this program they have to reside on campus because it's a, a residential based campus and and the only way you will get out of residing on campus while completing this program would be if there were some type of extenuating circumstances that prevented you from doing so and however they classify that you will have to speak with them obviously if you weren't able to reside on campus so it's an eight week intensive summer program so two months more or less most of your summer depending on when you ended um high school etc etc so the curriculum is based on the things that you would need um or the things that would be significant for you to excel uh in college at least the first year and then of course the, the the material that you're introduced to while being a student in college, you know, helps you propel um, through college and beyond. So English, mathematics, reading, and it says an academic support um, lab. So probably science, some type of science course that involves a lab. Anyway, um, the format is classroom instruction. Um, not sure how it works because of the current um, pandemic, but most cities, states, countries, internationally, globally, however uh, you would like to classify, are um, easing restrictions and certain mandates are being lifted. So, yeah. Classes are Monday through Friday, and then they have certain weekend activities, um, maybe enrichment, enrichment type stuff that um, it may be like um, just summer activity. So you won't be, it, it just won't be, I guess, all work and no um, fun time. So if you successfully complete this program, you will possess the eligibility to enroll at any institution of higher learning in the state of Mississippi during the fall semester. So not only could you um, potentially enroll at Mississippi Valley State University, after you successfully complete this program, you can go to other HBCUs uh, within the state of Mississippi, or you can go to any other institution within the state of Mississippi, okay?
GED student requirements. Now, some people call it high school equivalency um, test, so HSE, and then they still refer to it as GED, General Edu Educational Development Test. It's the same thing. The name changed and maybe like the curriculum has expanded, but more or less it's the same. Um, so if you haven't received your high school diploma, um, you will be admitted potentially if you have successfully completed your GED. And then they have something that I found to be very interesting and very useful and very nice because I haven't seen it before. Um, and I don't know if other schools do this, but I think it's very good. So I'm going to read it. It says applicants who are scheduled to graduate from high school in 1995 or before the spring semester in 1995 will be admitted to the university based on based upon the admission standards that were in effect at that time. That is golden. I've never seen that before. Ever until now and then the next one if your graduation date was after 1995 spring semester you will be admitted to you to the university based upon the current admission standards um, applicants who are 21 years of age um, so adult learners with the GED should refer to the over 21 section and then while I put over 21 next to it um, it says applicants may be admitted on the first time entering freshman requirements or may be granted admission without meeting those requirements verbatim from the website. If you do not meet the first time entering admission requirements, so basically a freshman traditional student in quotes, then um, you may register for a maximum of 12 semester hours as a non-degree seeker. If you do meet the regular admission standards by by completing a, a, a minimum of 12 semester hours with the C average, um, then you'll possess degree student status, okay? So they also have another um, option in terms of admission called Complete to Compete. Um, this was relaunched um, in all Mississippi public colleges and universities with the goal of aiding students who possess a substantial need. So the mission is to increase the number of Mississippi adults with credentials of value by removing any potential barriers posed to adult learners who have earned college credits but do not possess a degree. So maybe you went to school however long ago but you didn't finish and certain things happen. This program is for you. So it says university degree studies program is geared to adult learners with at least 90 credit hours, but they do not have a bachelor's degree and they have not attended a college or university within the past two years. This is based on a last date of attendance. So they're going to look at your academic transcripts or request your academic transcripts to find out your last date of attendance because I'm sure you can tell them, but they'll fact check. Students must be at least 21 years of age or older. They must have earned at least 12 hours of college credit, but they have not earned a, a degree to date. So it says at least 90 and then it says at least 12. Both of them are listed on the site, so I included both. Been out of college for the past two years. I stated that already, but it was there twice. And then participants will be offered a renewable $1,000 grant. So it's an educational award that's uh, for this program, but it depends. So there's certain requirements and as always, everything that you need to know regarding everything will be in the description box below. So long as I can fit it, like I crowd that area with a lot of useful information. So please read it. And if you don't see anything explained as much as other things is because I ran out of characters. Um, international first years. This is what they call it. So these are the requirements. Um, and for SAT, ACT score, it's either or. And you also, just as with other institutions, have to do the course by course evaluation. And then they have 
links that you can follow and they have recommendations um, to get the course by course evaluation because the way things are graded or scored in one country is different than another country so it varies by country which is why they have this evaluation thing and the evaluated transcript has to be submitted to the institution um yeah and then that's pretty much that i won't go through anymore um and then applying as an international transfer so the young lady at the bottom right um she it didn't say that she was an international transfer i needed some to fill this space but she is a student at this institution and she is an international student from the dominican republic so for right now she's going to represent the face of international transfer students but she is not an international transfer student she is an international student from the Dominican Republic studying at Mississippi Valley State University. Okay, so if you're an international transfer, you have to meet the, the school's transfer admission requirements for domestic students. You can go back to previous slides to find out what that is. I'm not going to rehash it. Um, and then applicants who have completed 12 or more hours of university level academic courses with a B average do not have to take the ACT or SAT and may receive transfer credit. Financial aid tuition and hashtag show me the money because as I always say, you should not have to pay for school. Education, schooling should be free. Um, so let them pay for you okay and it's all on one side i'm trying to save time and save space and it was certain things that i didn't see now as i noted before this school states that they don't have out-of-state tuition so in terms of tuition the amounts listed here is for a full-time student of course the rates are going to be different if you're a part-time student and if you live at home because these costs essentially they include everything along with i'm sure the meal plan and the housing options because i didn't see the cost for housing and i didn't see meal plan listed separately or at least i couldn't find it but over here when i look up certain things that are based in the states i.e the usfa the united states of america north america us whatever some things i cannot see is restricted um number one first things first rest in peace uncle phil no you have to complete fafsa you have to complete your your um your FAFSA, the federal school code is there. And this school has a helpline because they partner with the nonprofit to assist students with their FAFSA application. So the contact information and for that will be in the description box below, as long as it's within the character limit, because it's gonna be a lot of stuff down there. Um so yeah. And then they have different scholarship options. So they have for, have one for high school seniors entering um, this school. So it's a $500 scholarship and $150 annual book fee allowance. If you don't see an amount, it's because I didn't see one. Um, then there's music scholarships. Then there's athletic scholarships, which are annual scholarships. Then there's the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, which is an annual scholarship. Um, then they have the ROTC scholarships, so Army Reserve Officers Training Corps scholarships, so it's up to eight thousand a year, um, and then or a year of tuition related fees, four hundred and fifty dollars for books and a hundred and fifty dollar allowance. Um, there's also the school's committee for private funds, so they have donors who donate money to the schools that's the tom joined the scholarship gates millennium scholars then that's the, uh various scholarships from the united negro college fund um presidential academic scholarships vice president scholarships university scholarships transfer scholarships and there were a few more but as i stated i didn't want to crowd it so i put it here 
and not there because this is scholarships and this is related to financial aid and tuition. These are the housing options and at this institution they are separated by a person's biological sex. Therefore, if you are a transgender student um, and you're considering admission to this institution and your gender expression doesn't align with your biological um, sex or if you're into sex, I'm pretty sure you can speak with somebody. Um, you should be able to, and perhaps they can place you um, in the housing option that you would be most comfortable with. And of course, based on availability, because it literally has female students and then male students. I know that um, a lot of college dormitories will separate students um, in rooms or in halls at times based on you know um biological sex etc but as i stated if you are a transgender student or intersex and um you want to be you know comfortable no safety issues um maybe contact the housing and residential life department can speak to them so you can be placed um, in the housing option um, that reflects who you are as a person and that you feel comfortable and these are the options I didn't see any prices but I just saw the name so that's what I listed and that picture is not what housing looks like at this institution is just an image used to represent housing okay campus life so i don't know if they have greek life they used to have greek life because this at this institution um many many years ago it's where my grandma my maternal grandma um what is it pledge what is it zeta phi beta or something she she was a zeta and she played it at this school because this is the school she went to they have a few different clubs and organizations um, the health center because you guys stay on top of the health. This is a part of campus life. Career services and a federal work studies to get you a job. Um, student counseling center if you're having, you know, certain um, issues, anxiety, mental health issues, make sure you get you speak to somebody regarding that so you can receive the proper assistance. Then the sports delta. Devil Gazettes, I don't know what that is. It says religious activities and athletics. Anything else I'm I, I'm not sure about. I just did a general description of what they offer. And finally, um, as always, thank you for watching. As I mentioned before, all the information presented in this PowerPoint was taken directly from the school's website and it's always being used for educational and informational purposes only. I'm learning and I'm, you know, I'm trying to, to help the people. Um, so are you considering applying to this institution? So the young man in this image today, he's going to represent a Mississippi Valley State University student. This is him and he has been strolling through the libraries, um, you know, and he's reading some fascinating book, not a book that's required for class, but something he's interested in. Maybe a recommended book or maybe something that was cited in a paper because this school is a historically black college um, university. It falls under the HBCU umbrella, but it was a college and now it's a university kid. Anyway, he's been he's been going um from you know bookshelf to bookshelf out to out um just learning more embracing more embracing the atmosphere in the institution thank you for watching hopefully i can put out two more videos today but it's been a long day so we shall see bye oh yeah um stay safe uh keep studying be well take care not in that order but you get it